Welcome. E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be checking out the dwarf race specific heroes. So, uh, there are a lot of heroes out there that benefit dwarf and all races. For example, you have Avalon and Elena. They're going to be good in every single army. Uh, Avalon for his Warhorn and for, for Dwarf, Avalon would be uh, crucial if you're using Miners uh, because of the aura for the Humanoids for more health. But since uh, today we're focusing just on uh, Dwarf specific heroes, like ones that give uh, major buffs to the Dwarf race, things along those lines as far as Masteries, we're going to stick to those ones. Things like Ophidius, uh, Avalon, um, Elena, uh, Jax, all, all those types of things are absolutely massive when it, when it comes to all races. So we're going to exclude them from, from this introduction. Uh, I do want to note that uh, for the humanoid units in Dwarf, Avalon's huge because of the plus HP. Varian for his Crusader Shield is also instrumental in protecting uh, your Dwarf humanoid units. However, for today, while we focus on the Dwarven heroes, these are going to be the four Dwarf heroes that we're going to focus on. Uh, we have Gafgar, who is a gladiator. We have Nora, who's a mechanic. Uh, we have Jack, who's also a mechanic. And we have Grimms, who is a general. So, right from the get-go, we can see that Dwarf is the only race to have uh, heroes that are mechanics. Uh, it's kind of cool, it, 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 and it makes a lot of sense when, when we see the types of troops that Dwarf has. So let's jump on in. We'll go left to, to right and we'll we'll first look at Gafgar. So since Gafgar is a gladiator, he can equip uh, two weapons. Now, Gafgar is a relatively unique uh, uh, gladiator in the sense that his his ultimate ability, when, when we get there, sorry for jumping ahead, uh, will give him a shield for, uh, I believe it's like 20 seconds of, of the fight, and it's a huge huge shield so as long as he doesn't instantly get sniped off before that like bubble appears uh, he will live for a while if you you are planning to play dwarf then there's a good chance you're going to be relying heavily on mechanics or mechs um me mechs are going to be instrumental to your uh, ability to play dwarf uh because of that gafgar actually has a bunch of bonuses to to mechs and for items he has a, uh, an engine core and it offers plus one to temporary repair. I do like this because temporary repair is a massive skill, absolutely massive. And he also has a, a repair driver which off offers plus one to repair man, which again is just, uh, it, it's a mastery type of bonus. So when, when you're actually gearing Gafgar, um, honestly, just throw on whatever you need for stats and for trinkets, you can either go for the plus ones or stats. I do put the Solantius on him uh, because I want him to live past his normal shield. So uh, for skills, we have Startling Blow. So this one, this one is very subtle. And if you don't have a lot of stat points because or skill points because we're relatively low level or just starting out, this is a wonderful one point uh, wonder. Um, might even be one of the, the better one point wonders as far as the games for for the skill. So Starling Blows does a little bit of AoE damage whenever he attacks, and if he does that damage, he will stun the enemies for three seconds. So you're getting a three second stun, and you don't have to do anything for it other than place the hero and put one point into the skill. So it is pretty good. Um, now the big ones for Dwarf is going to be Repairman, because Repairman uh, is going to increase the, the max health on the battlefield. This is, uh, this is just like Mastery. Um, but it's only going to affect the health. So uh, repairman go to absolutely if you are using uh, max. Now, if for some reason you do decide to try out miners, uh, which I do not advise at all ever for any reason, if you do decide to do that, he does have technical repair and also, of course, bring up the aura on Warhorn. He also has uh, repair mastery. So repair mastery is a huge skill for uh, Gafgar and for dwarfs in general. Uh, so what this does is it repairs uh, friendly mechs uh, and it lasts for a pretty long period of time. If you guys have ever done PvP, 19 seconds is a long period of time. Uh, and it also scales with his stamina, which he will want to have a lot of because he is a gladiator and usually towards the front line uh, and people will try to kill him. 
what makes this so good is it heals by percentage of max health. So if you guys have seen my other videos where I, I lay into how anything with percentage max health in, in a video game uh, is usually overpowered and broken, here's another one. Uh, so it heals based off of their max health, which means the more health they have, the faster they're going to heal. Throw on top of that uh, noble blood, and that's why some of these mechs just look like they're never going to die. Um, it is really, really strong. Highly recommend it. And finally, we have Iron Shield, and what Iron Shield does is it reduces all damage by 90% for the first 20 seconds. Then you throw on the Salantius as well, and you're pretty much uh, set up to get a solid 30 seconds minimum out of Gafgar. Uh, in most cases, sometimes uh, he might just get sniped down. So that is Gafgar. Gafgar is the gladiator. He's the backbone of your, your mechs in the Dwarven army. Uh, so with that, the, the next one we'll move on to is Nora. Nora is a specific hero for the rockets, or I think they're called pyrotechs now, the, the bombers for dwarfs. However, most people don't use uh, bombers for dwarf, uh, but I wanted to include Nora because she fits into that category that we were talking about. Now, if you, uh, if you want a decent uh, Nora build, this is uh, your decent Nora build. Uh, so, Nora is actually a high DPS uh, type of character. Even without a true ruby, she is still able to put out a bunch of damage. Uh, so, so, the first thing is you want to increase her, her crit uh, hit chance. You can do this either through the rapier or the earrings. I prefer the uh, rapier because then we can uh, throw on the destructive rage plus one. I just find that, uh, that that's me personally. That's what I like to do, and it works. Next, we have the um, the Clash Face set. So this Clash Face set is pretty cool because it offers 30% bonus damage to enemies with uh, lower uh, current health than the hero. Now, that current health is uh, 5, 7, uh, 6,000 HP. Remember, there's new castle levels coming out, so everything's going to go up. Also, hero's health is going to go up. I think that for taking out squishy stuff, the, the Clash of Fate set is huge. And finally, we also throw on the uh, pistol because pistol is good. Now, you have uh, multiple options when it comes to your artifacts. Uh, for me, I do like the uh, Sun Flare. You can go with the Staple, whatever you want, really. Th this one's pretty good because it will offer bonus range and uh, critical hit chance. It, it's good all around. Now, the big thing is, uh, if you have a true ruby, you want to use that as far as your prisms. Um, if you do not have a true ruby, uh, there is a fine ruby option. So thank you to KDG for pointing this out. It's, it's actually working pretty well. Um, and what it looks like is it's the uh, Reaper. And the Reaper offers bonus evade chance, bonus accuracy. Uh, and for the first 20 seconds of the fight, Nora would gain bonus evade chance, accuracy, uh, critical hit chance, and life seal. The biggest things out of this is going to be the accuracy and the crit chance. Uh, everything else is huge, but getting uh, getting higher accuracy is going to allow you to do more DPS because you're not going to miss and to get the higher crit, crit chance, you're just going to do more damage. So if you do not have a shooter ruby, uh, that is uh, so something to consider. Now, as far as the abilities, uh, if you are planning on running bombers, uh, pyrotechs, wh whatever you want to call them now, uh, this is the mastery for that. I think this is really good mastery. Uh, as I usually say, if you are using any specific type of troop and they have a mastery available, which every single troop type does, um, yeah, they, they all do. It, if it's not a mastery, it will be something like Nietzsche's Blessing. Uh, so always, always, always use them because it's so much uh, health. Uh, I mean, you're, you're almost adding like, what, what is it, 42 or 45% more health and attack. It's huge. So same thing with uh, this if, if you decide to play with uh, Pyrotex or the Bombers. Now for anything else, um, you have some options. Uh, the, uh, the uh, geez, I'm not even going to try with this same. So every five seconds, Nora fires a, a bunch of uh, cannonballs. Uh, I think this is uh, this is instrumental to uh, proccing the true ruby, but this is also just going to offer so much more damage. Uh, it, it's huge. It's huge. I, this is a must-have for Nora. The next is uh, Command Strike. So uh, what this allows is for the first 30 seconds of the battle, she gets bonus uh, attack speed. Um, and the critical hit chance uh, also affects the bombers. That, that part's not, not super huge. It's the attack speed for Nora. 
Uh, but if you do decide to play with bombers, also make sure you level up this skill. Air cannon is not, not a bad uh, skill at all uh, because first of all, it will offer a pushback stun and second, it will put weakening armor on. I choose not to use it. Um, some people have fantastic results with it. Uh, it's not something that, that I, I need at this point in time. Next, we have Destructive Rage. So Destructive Rage, this is kind of like the freebie for free stats. Uh, you can level this up, um, but also, what is it? Whenever uh, Nora expends a round of ammo, her damage is increased. So she'll get slightly more damage. Uh, however, the big takeaway is uh, all of the, the might. It's just free might sitting there at, on, on uh, for a skill. Finally, we have combat reload. So this is going to help out with, with ammunition issues when, when it comes to dwarf. I think this is an, another uh, really good one point wonder. I'm sure you, you could go higher if you want to, but all of her other skills are huge. So if you have a true ruby, awesome. Your Nora is going to do amazing. If you don't have a true ruby, uh, try out the reaper set if you can, if you can uh, get a fine ruby uh, or uh, just go with anything that's going to increase her range, accuracy, and uh, cr critical. Uh, th th those things will help you out when it comes to Nora. So the next hero that, that we have is actually Jax. So Jax, is, uh, Jax used to be the king of heroes uh, for, for a long time. And I still really like Jax. So for, for Jax, uh, go with whatever you want at, as far as like the, the gear and the items. Um, you're going to want to feel comfortable with it. You're going to want to get the sass that you want. For me, I do go with the plus sandwich to mech just because there's so many mechs. And honestly, it offers a lot of magic. Next, you do want some form of increased crit, crit chance. So that could either be through the earrings or the, the rapier. Um, and as far as the items, so th there's a new item. It's in the void. If you're not quite at this point, uh, there should be... Uh, now, there is a legendary option for this. Uh, it's called uh, Mechanical Core, which offers plus one to uh, Mech Expert. However, uh, if, if you can get uh, the, the one from higher up in, in the void, you're going to get way better stats. So uh, basically, it's going to be plus one to, to mechs um, because, again, any, anytime you can boost that up. And honestly, the stats for this are not bad. I, I think that's, what, 25 stats? Not bad. Also, the pistol. Pistols just helps. Uh, a lot of the tanky things in the game are going to be melee. So if you can do bonus sandwich to the tanky melee things, that's good. Uh, as far as the shards, you, you're more than welcome to run shards on, on Jax. So you want things, uh, if, if you have a second true ruby, go, go with that uh, for the true damage one. Otherwise, the plus attack really helps with, with Jax. Uh, that, that's what I have on him for right now. So to boost up the attack, it helps on the power side. But you also don't have to put a prism on him. As far as artifacts, you have a ton of different options. Uh, staple, sun, sunbow, all that fun stuff. Uh, go check them out and try out different things. Find the one that fits you the best. Now, as far as abilities, um, the first thing I have to say is never put points into rocket launcher unless you're planning on maxing it out. This is a either all or nothing skill. This is not a one point wonder. This is the exact opposite. And I used to share this a lot in the past and, and I don't think I've gotten off on this tangent in a while. If you have one point in rocket launcher, the ammo depletion rate for your Jax is going to double. So Jax is going to run out of ammo almost twice as fast as usual. And he's going to do horrible, horrible damage with the rocket launcher. Now, if this is maxed out, it actually does a tiny bit of damage uh, to, to like cluster base races. Uh, that's your skeletons, that, that's your humans. More often than not, this is an utterly useless skill that getting even one point into it is going to rapidly speed up how fast Jax runs on ammo. Do not do it, please. Uh, next, we, we have uh, Firestorm. So this is inactive and it will cut down the path in the battlefield. Some people will get a point or two in, in this. Now, I really like Firestorm on Jax um, when I have the available skill points. I think for Dwarf, it is very hard to get it. You can make sacrifices to get Firestorm if you like having that control of the spray. For me, I, I did not, but I, I totally get that, and I think that's a totally valid thing to, uh, to go for. Next, we have Mech Expert. So again, anytime you can get a Mastery, make sure you get the Mastery. Uh, and now this this is where the, the uh, bigger portions are. And I think I, I actually, yeah. Um, 
we have expended ammo. Expended ammo is going to give Jax more ammo. If he doesn't have ammo, he's going to get out of the spray and pray and do less damage. Double charge. Uh, I think I covered this in his hero spotlight. Double charge, wherever his body's facing, uh, he's going to send out like little things. It does wonders in taking out backlines and squishy heroes, but his positioning is everything when it comes to double charge. I love double charge. I, I think it's fantastic. And then we have spray and pray. So this, you, you set it and you forget it as far as Jax. Uh, one, once he's in fire off, you just make sure he has enough ammo, feed him ammo, and uh, you are good. Uh, so for the items for Jax, you can also take out one, one of these and put on the plus one to spray and pray. That's what I just realized uh, when I was like, uh oh, uh, well, well, we're going over the skills. Because after this video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. And that brings us to our last hero for dwarfs, and that is Grimm's. So Grimm's is a fantastic hero. Um, I don't think he needs a shard, and I don't think he needs an artifact. You can throw on whatever artifacts uh, you aren't using on anything else. So uh, the artifact I have on him, it's not really good uh, for him. But I just had it laying around, and I threw it on him. Now, as far as equipments, put on whatever you want for, for equipments. Uh, there are a couple... Um, there are a couple different options for him. Uh, you can go for uh, pure stats. Um, he does have some uh, so, some equipments that offer like plus one to ammo reload. I, I don't think it's worth it for PvP. You're going to give up a lot of stats. So uh, I do think focusing just on stats for Grimm's is everything for PvP. Uh, so when it comes to the skills, uh, he has a uh, suppressive fire, which I should might as well throw the extra points into. What it does is at the start of the fight, he just launches a bunch of shells. At the beginning of the game, this is a really cool skill because it just seems to do a bunch of damage. Um, once you're past like level 10, it does no damage. So once you're up to 45 and uh, you're, you're going up against uh, 6, 7 million HP trees, this skill really doesn't matter that much. However, you might as well put extra points in. Kind of like Smoke Bomb. So Smoke Bomb is also another one that is just really... Uh, it's really not worth it. It's an active skill and it gives minimal results. Uh, I'm sure there's like that one person out there that's found some mad OP thing with this, but it's not me. Uh, as far as the other stuff, he has tank mastery. So if you do choose to uh, play with tanks, uh, because it is dwarf and they do have tanks, then go with tank mastery. Uh, tank mastery is huge. Again, anytime you place a hero that has mastery, make sure you're using that mastery. Uh, next, we have the uh, Siege Mastery. Again, anytime that uh, you're deploying something that has Mastery, uh, make sure that you have the Mastery with it. So if you're sieging with uh, Catapults, Ballistas, well, whatever your race offers, uh, make sure that you have this. This will work for, um, I believe... Yeah, I, th this works for any race. So it doesn't matter if you're human or, or um, Lich, although just go with Warlocks. Sorry, it's been a while since I sieged with the catapults and stuff. I'm so used to doing it as Lich. Uh, I still do it as Lich, too. Uh, anyways, the the last two skills of Grimm's is really the big takeaways, especially for PvP, and uh, it's universal for, um, for, for Dwarf. No matter what, what type of Dwarf you play. Even if you don't play Dwarf, it still helps out. So the first one is Ammo Wagon, which um, basically gives all of the ammo users more ammo at the start. Like like their, their tank of ammo just got bigger. Now, important to note, and this is really important because if there's not a... If you're not a Dwarf player or you decide to change races down the line, this still uh, pertains to it. This will affect your heroes. So that includes Nora and that includes Jax. Two really high DPS heroes who all of a sudden can do that high DPS for 30%, uh, 36% longer. I highly, uh, highly, highly recommend this one. And finally, we have Ammo Reload. This is the one that takes one uh, energy and it will reload all the ammo on the battlefield. So, so like I, I said before, I really don't think it's uh, it, it's necessarily uh, w worth it to put on the plus one trinket for PvP. If you're doing PvM or if you're doing sieging, then yeah, it's, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, in, in fact, yeah, th there's different setups that, that you can go for it. Um, this is uh, my, my typical siege setup. Um, when I am using the siege stuff, I, I should put on the plus one trinket, but I don't siege as dwarf ever. 
uh, and I don't put out jacks. But anyways, I, I, I digress. So uh, make sure that you use uh, grims how, how you want. I'll show you an example of different uh, setups for, for sets. So that's one of them that when I'm going to win uh, Might, Magic, and Stamina, if I'm going more for uh, Command with, with everything else, I, it might lo look like this. So you, you have many different setups you can do for Grims. So that right there is the four main uh, dwarf heroes. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and got something out of this. If, if you guys like this, uh, please uh, consider hitting this, the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed already. There's a bunch of cool information in the links down below. So go check that out. And until tomorrow, guys, have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys later.